So I wanted to just take a few moments to address a few news articles I've been seeing that are talking about a new book that's out. This book is titled Good Christian Sex. It's written by a female pastor and it has the subtitle of Why Chastity Isn't the Only Option. This uh, book seems to want to try and answer the question, can a single Christian have sex outside of marriage? If you were to ask this author and this book, the book and author tell you yes. Yes, single Christians can have sex as long as it's mutually pleasurable and affirming, whatever that means. It's also interesting to note that on the subtitle it says, Why Chastity Isn't the Only Option. That's curious because as a professing Christian, knowing that chastity means purity, it's interesting to want to subtitle your book, Why Purity Isn't the Only Option. This question of sex before marriage or sex outside of marriage is a very basic one. And the Bible does give us an answer. So instead of looking to this book, let's look to the book, God's Word, our source of truth, and see what it says. I'd like to show you where you can find the answer to this question. So we go to, to 1 Corinthians 7, verse 2. And we have to do just a little bit of work because you don't see the phrase sex before marriage in the Bible anywhere. We do see that the Bible condemns adultery and sexual immorality, but we're trying to answer the question, is sex before marriage or is sex outside of marriage considered sexually immoral? And according to 1 Corinthians 7 verse 2, it is. When we read that, it says, but because of the temptation to sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife and each woman her own husband. In that verse, Paul is saying that marriage is the cure for sexual immorality. This is basically saying that because people can't control themselves, and so many are falling into the sin of immoral sex outside of marriage, that people should get married. That way they can fulfill their passions, but in a moral way. <clears throat> Now stick with me, since 1 Corinthians 7 verse 2 clearly includes sex before marriage or sex outside of marriage in the definition of sexual immorality, well then all the other Bible verses that condemn sexual immorality as sin also condemn sex before marriage as sinful. All the different verses that condemn sexual immorality in the Bible are therefore declaring sex before marriage to also be a sin. <clears throat> this book is just a, another example of Bible twisting, someone taking God's word and, and making it say what they want it to say, which is fulfilling what Paul warned Timothy about in 2 Timothy 4 verses 3 through 4. Paul wrote, For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. We must be careful not to make God's word say what we want it to say. It doesn't matter what she wants it to say or what I want it to say. None of that matters. That's irrelevant. It only matters what God says. God is the author of his word, the author of the Bible. He might have had men write it, but the Holy Spirit is the one who inspired it, the one who breathed it out. And so because of that, God is the author. And just like any other book, we need to ask ourselves when we read it, what was the author intending to say here? What was the authorial intent? We must look for what God's will is, what God's desire is in his word, not our own. When we look outside of God's will and try and make it say, his words say what we want it to say, that's when we become a false teacher. Now, this is a pretty basic question that's being answered wrongly in this book, but you know, should we be surprised because she's a f calling herself a pastor and 
God's word also clearly states that women cannot be pastors or elders. In 1 Timothy 2, verses 12 through 14, Paul tells Timothy that he does not allow a woman to teach or exercise authority over a man, but to remain quiet. Another way of putting quiet there would be to remain submissive, in submission, in the proper place. For it was Adam who was first created, and then Eve. And it was not Adam who was deceived, but the woman, being quite deceived, fell into transgression. So you see, there's an authority, a structure set up by God. He has a, a structure set up in the family, and he has a structure set up in the church. It's very clear. So when we see uh, this woman calling herself a pastor, it's very clear that, that uh, she is not teaching what the Bible teaches. So she's not, she's not accurately teaching what the Bible says about women's roles in the church, and she's also not accurately teaching about what God's Word says about Christians having sex outside of marriage. And this is dangerous. After all, if, if people like her can't get this simple truth right, how can you trust them to get other things right in God's Word? I hope this helps, and... Uh, Maybe we'll go into another video sometime soon here about uh, female pastors. I know that's a touchy subject. Maybe we can make another video of that coming up soon and go in more detail into that. But I hope this helps you, and uh, may God bless you. And may he make his grace and knowledge in, in his word abound to you. God's peace be with you. Bye-bye.